The cure for aging has been sought from time immemorial. Eternal life sounds impossible, of course. But living for a century, or even a bit longer, seems quite realistic. What innate resources do centenarians have? Is it possible to stay active and productive even at 90? There is a Russian scientist who has all the answers. His inventions are unique. His advice is realistic. And his authority is renowned worldwide. Director of the St. Petersburg Institute of Bioregulation and Gerontology, Vice President of the Gerontological Society, Past President of the IAGG European Department, Main Specialist in Gerontology and Geriatrics of the Government of St. Petersburg, Member of the Russian Academy of Sciences, Honored Scientist of the Russian Federation, Honored Inventor, Laureate of the USSR Council of Ministers Prize, Professor, Doctor of Medical Science. Such devotion to a profession might be expected from a descendant of a medical dynasty, as some might say. But the destiny of Vladimir Havinson was filled with contrasts. He was born on the 27th of November, 1946, to the family of a military officer, and his place of birth was also unusual. I was born in Germany, the city of Kotbas. The war had just ended, and my father was in the military service there. He was a member of Tank Brigade No. 91, under the command of Yakubovsky, the future marshal of the Soviet Union. Later on, Yakubovsky was assigned as the commander of the Warsaw Pact forces. Yakubovsky was the brigade commander, and my father was the chief of staff. Then, we moved to Belarus, where my father served at various military posts, and after that, we moved to Minsk. Discipline and order in the Havinson family were exemplary, and Vladimir was destined to become a career officer. In 1959, he entered the Suvorov Military School in Minsk. This military school was founded in 1953, and it was the best Suvorov military school in the USSR because their teaching staff was outstanding. All of the teachers were military officers, majors, lieutenant colonels, and all of them were honored teachers of Belarus. The level of education attained was extremely high. As for language training, we had English lessons twice a day, general English and military translation, where we studied maps, strategies, and staff papers of the USA and the UK armies. And I am convinced that such regulations such military discipline, healthy nutrition, and daily schedule are what all young people need. This is the way to stay healthy. I was an A-plus student and was awarded a golden medal for academic excellence. I was also a sportsman. I was the champion of Belarus in running and featherweight boxing. Later on, I became a member candidate of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, as an exceptional case. What path was chosen next? Vladimir was interested in rocket engineering, but his parents wanted him to become a military doctor. His golden medal in academics and his achievements in sports offered him numerous opportunities, but Vladimir chose the Military Medical Academy. I remember my entrance exams. Everybody had to pass the exams at that time. To get a good mark, I was assisted by two colonels from the academy, but I was prepared excellently, and I received all A pluses. So, as you can see, it was easy for me to enter the academy. It was the best educational institution, and not only in the field of military medicine, but in general. Its history was bountiful. Many great scientists and physicians of Russia, and later on, of the USSR worked there, including the founder of the field of surgery, Nikolai Piregov, some outstanding pharmacologists, and the Nobel Prize winner, Ivan Pavlov. Student days for Vladimir Havinson and his friend and future scientific partner, Vyacheslav Morozov, were far from being carefree. 
the many hours of laboratory studies, the continuous experiments, having to read thousands of books. There was practically no time for leisure. But that was the path they'd chosen. We published our first scientific work during our fourth year at the Academy. And during the sixth year, we started working with peptides, extracted from calves' organs. And we were awarded first prize at the Scientific Works Contest, which was held among the Academy's students. During the fourth and fifth years at the Academy, we studied numerous materials, including those dedicated to innovative, previously unknown research. And then we decided to extract those peptides to improve brain and pineal gland functions. We started working on that using the facilities of the biochemistry and pharmacology departments. The famous professors, Boris Korovkin and Vasily Vinogradov, were our supervisors, and they helped us a lot. Vladimir Havinson graduated from the Academy in 1971. He worked as a doctor in the Transbaikal and Leningrad military regions. After that, he returned to the academy. In 1988, Havinson was appointed as head of the Scientific Research Laboratory of Bioregulators, organized under an official decision of the State Committee on Science and Technology of the USSR. In 1989, Vladimir Havinson formed the State Biomedical Research and Manufacturing Complex, Cytomed, and in the year of 1992, the St. Petersburg Institute of Bioregulation and Gerontology was established. Through all of those years, Havinson was working on the creation of peptide preparations which can restore the protein concentration in an organism and inhibit its aging. In the days of the USSR, we developed six medications a medication enhancing immune system functions, a medication aimed at restoration of retinal functions. The latter was done to resist the destructive effect of laser weapons. By the way, the Americans haven't developed it yet. A prostate preparation, which helps to restore prostate functions in case of various diseases. A brain preparation, cortexin, which is included in a standard therapy program for stroke patients. Cortexin is a great drug. It was invented as a treatment for soldiers in Afghanistan, since there were lots of blast and cerebral injuries. And cortexin restored brain functions. So far, cortexin is the most effective preparation in the world when it comes to restoration of brain activity. We also created a preparation of the pineal gland, epitholamine. Vladimir and his colleague Morozov have been deeply immersed in science since their student days. And I suppose by the time of his graduation from the academy, Havinson was ready to defend his PhD. He's done a good deal of brilliant groundwork, and his further life has been dedicated to science. He is the head of a very serious institution, and they do a lot of vital, important, and, I would say, efficient research. Peptides are very short proteins of one nanometer in size. They contain from two to 10 amino acids, and they stimulate the aging cells to act in the same way as they do in a young and healthy organism. It results in restoration of the biological and functional activities of organs and tissues, and protein synthesis is normalized. At the moment, Vladimir Havinson is the inventor of 39 peptide bioregulators and six pharmaceuticals, which are successfully used for medical purposes. There is no doubt that this line of research is of great importance. For example, if I remember correctly, there are 26 million elderly people in Russia. In 10 to 15 years, the number will reach 40 million. It's a huge challenge. The aging of the population is a global problem. And medicine will be facing it first. That is why development of such technologies is an issue of paramount importance. Today we speak of gerontology, the control of aging. 
It's a burning issue, for we have many great scientists famous for their academic achievements who have become old, and we need to extend their lives because they possess such great potential. And when we speak of Havenson, we speak of a man who has dedicated himself to the problem of life extension. It is very important and very interesting. We must support such people. Yes, our focus is on this work, and lots of the research is related to the peculiarities and the course of different aging-associated diseases. It involves cardiology, surgery, endocrinology, and all other fields connected with age-related changes in the various treatment processes. And since life expectancy is increasing, not only in Russia, but worldwide, these problems are of great importance. In fact, there is no remedy against aging. However, a healthy lifestyle offers the best opportunity for a long life. But the peptides and the research conducted in this field are definitely a huge breakthrough. There are more and more publications on this topic nowadays because we, scientists, trust only numbers, studies, facts, and the numerous research results on peptides are very encouraging. We are talking about life extension. I believe it is the most important issue in the world. Our times are abundant in negative impacts that affect the human body. The studies of Havenson are of great interest. He is a promising scientist and a brilliant person. There's nothing to add. God grant him good luck. Our peptides are called Havenson peptides. What is the difference between them and the others? Havenson peptides regulate certain genes. For instance, what is aging? It is the decrease in gene activity and protein synthesis, because genes control protein synthesis. When protein synthesis slows down, the functions of the body's organs start to decrease as well, which leads to various diseases or premature aging. And when we activate genes, we activate protein synthesis. It improves the structure of tissues and organs, and consequently, the efficiency and vital resource of the organism is increased. And this is the formula of life. Peptides, genes, aging. This is how it may be described. Some time ago, Havenson was criticized for the fact that his successful experiments with peptide administration to mice are still experiments with mice, even despite the fact that the experiment showed a 40% increase in lifespan in peptide-treated animals. But the human research has also been conducted, and this was a long-term investigation. We conducted a 15-year-long human research project. It took place in two locations, one of which was the Institute of Gerontology of the National Academy for Medical Sciences of Ukraine. There we worked together with the academician Oleg Vasilyevich Korkushka, who has already turned 83, by the way, under the supervision of another academician, Dmitry Fyodorovich Chebataryov, who was the director of the institute. So, we started our research in Kiev. The patients enrolled were around 65 years old. They were admitted into a hospital twice a year for a one-month examination. All the results were carefully recorded. Fifteen years passed, and the results of the research demonstrated a 50% decrease in mortality rates in patients treated with our preparations as compared to those of the control group. I met Vladimir Havenson in the 90s. In 1991, he came to our institute and told us about his ideas. We were working in the same field, so we decided to conduct this research. But at that time, we couldn't even imagine that peptides would have such a positive effect on patients with premature aging, especially on those patients suffering from coronary heart disease, despite standard therapy. And the difference with the second group was 38 to 40 percent over the 15-year period. Nowadays, Peptide bioregulators are widely used in gerontology, but initially peptides were developed to enhance this vital resource of the organism 
and increase the combat capability of soldiers in extreme conditions, meaning that sportsmen can benefit from using peptides as well. So, it's no wonder that the coaches of the Russian Olympic team have also chosen Havenson. I remember when the coach and president of the Rhythmic Sporting Gymnastics Federation, Irina Viner Usmanova, asked us to help her team. The girls were very young, but already had some health issues. To our surprise, a general survey showed that their fatigue level was very high. They were treated with brain peptides, immune system peptides, cartilage and vessel peptides, and so on, and we managed to completely restore all their functions. They received the treatment before the Olympic Games in London, and we managed to greatly enhance their activity. None of them was ill, everyone performed brilliantly, and our team won gold medals. So this is an example of how peptides help people in high-stress situations. Vladimir Havenson has always been ready to change the world for the better. His trust in peptides, Russian medical inventions, and the power of science was steadfast. And it is no wonder that his parents became his first patients. My mother, Anna Yakovlevna, turned 95 on the 5th of December 2015, 95 years old. She has been suffering from diabetes for about 30 years. She also had retinal disorder. And she was the first patient treated with our retina preparation. You know why? Because I was terrified when my mother's ophthalmologist told me that she had diabetic retinopathy and she could go blind. And in this state of shock, I told her, Mom, we've invented a new medication. I think it has great potential. Let's try it. So she became our first patient. It was a unique moment indeed. As I said, my mother is 95 now and can still see. She undergoes a course of treatment with retina preparation twice a year. We also use vessel and brain preparations in her therapy. And this is my father. He passed away at the age of 92, unfortunately. He fell down a staircase and received a serious trauma, which later caused his death. But you know what's interesting? He had been administered with our peptides for almost 30 years. And after his death, the autopsy did not reveal any pathology. No signs of infarction, stroke, or arthrosclerosis. Nothing. In the scientific and medical community, Vladimir Havenson has earned a reputation for his enthusiasm and deep concern for his work. His working efficiency is extraordinary. His ability to pursue a desired goal is also well worth mentioning. And he doesn't do it with a commercial aim, but rather to prove the unique characteristics of his medication. I remember Vladimir in the days of our youth. He was the head of the biochemical department of the military academy, already a well-known person. He worked on those new peptide substances. I think it wasn't too easy or simple back then. But years and decades have passed. Vladimir still works on his research and maintains strong results. And I think that such devotion and determination to stay on the chosen path is very important. I met Vladimir in Siktivkar at the symposium. He spoke about peptides, their physiological activity, and their specific connection to DNA. A couple of years after that, I came to him and said, Volodya, I work with DNA and enzymes. You said that your peptides have a binding ability, so maybe they can regulate the activity of certain enzymes. Give me your peptides. Let's try. So he gave me the peptides. You see, I am a completely independent person, working under the auspices of Moscow State University. I carried out research, and it turned out that short peptides regulated the activity of many of the key enzymes indeed. Havenson and I even published a book as co-authors, and our cooperation has been really productive. Many people are skeptical about it. I used to be skeptical too, but my team and I conducted very detailed research and we saw that the appearance of tissue-specific genes, which regulate cell differentiation, changed significantly under the influence of peptides. It's hard to believe, 
but the fact remains. Havinson is an eminent scientist in his field and a person with great organizing skills, I would say. He is a very good person, kind man, a nice man, a brilliant doctor, and an outstanding representative of his profession. I've known Havinson since his childhood, so to say, starting from the very beginning of his career. He's always been into gerontology and substances regulating the process of aging. He's very passionate and deeply concerned about his work. We studied his low molecular peptides and their influence on the nervous and immune systems, and they turned out to be effective. Their mechanism of action is said to be not quite clear. There are many things that are hard to comprehend, you know, but it is what it is. Peptides work. We saw it with our own eyes. I've known Havanson since 1966. He was a first-year student when I entered the Military Medical Academy. He has been working on physiological and immunological issues from youth onwards, starting from his second year at the Academy. And the huge amount of progress he has made since that time makes us very proud. St. Petersburg and Russia are proud of Vladimir Havanson. Havinson is loaded for research and programmed for results. He carves new directions and paths with his character, his skills, his knowledge and his achievements. The St. Petersburg Institute of Bioregulation and Gerontology, headed by Vladimir Havinson, has been working on the development of methods for the prevention and correction of age-related pathologies for 23 years now. The introduction of peptides into medical practice has promoted the establishment of bioregulation therapy, for example, i.e., the complex application of peptide preparations for the purpose of treatment and prevention of various diseases. Application of these unique peptide preparations for preventive or medical purposes helps in reducing the risk of development of disease in the first place. And secondly, it helps to lessen post-disease complications because all problems are not only caused by the disease itself, but from its further complications. A person dies from the complications. This is why the combined application of medications is necessary. For example, this is a pancreas preparation. It restores the function of the pancreas. This is blood vessel preparation. It helps to strengthen vascular walls and also reduces the risk of complications from diabetes. Diabetic patients often die from vascular pathologies. Peptides are used for immune and neuroendocrine systems normalization. We're talking about a complex approach. I have muscular dystrophy. It means that the macula of the retina is dying, the cells are dying. It is accompanied by a scotomata appearance. Here, the doctors managed to reduce the degeneration, or rather, they stopped it completely. My vision has stopped deteriorating. Here, I receive a course of intramuscular and subcutaneous injections in the area of the temple. They treat me with medications that stimulate cell production. I guess this regeneration somehow compensates for the cell degeneration, and it stops. The effects of these medications remain in the body for a half a year. All the staff here is result-oriented. They do their best to improve the condition of the patients, or at least to stop the deterioration. We focus on retinal degeneration. This is the field where surgery or other than peptide therapy methods are helpless. Our peptides stop those degenerative processes and even reverse them. This result is rather unique. The specificity of treatment requires regular administration of our medications. This is why our patients come here for years. We set every course of treatment individually, and this is how we are able to stop the processes leading to inevitable blindness. Here our patient's vision is not just maintained, it is improved. Ophthalmology is one of the main lines of work of the St. Petersburg Institute of Bioregulation and Gerontology, but not the only one. Havenson peptides help to treat various diseases because they do not provoke antibody synthesis, which means that peptide-based preparations do not have any side effects at all. 
This was a very popular issue, but only the St. Petersburg Institute of Bioregulation and Gerontology managed to make significant progress in this area. This is the laboratory of bioinformatics and molecular projecting. These topics are in the forefront of today's science. You know why? Because the core of biology lies in molecular interaction and, primarily, in the interaction between peptides and DNA. Here we can see a DNA region. This is a telomerase gene, and this is a peptide. Turn it on again, please. Here is the peptide. This is a tetrapeptide. It was isolated from the pineal and consists of four amino acids. This peptide approaches the DNA, enters the major groove, and binds with it by various chemical bonds, which geometrically coincide with the DNA promoter region. This is a 3D model. It's in silico, of course which means that it's just a mathematical projection. But this is how it appears to be in living nature, most likely. And the interaction of this peptide with this gene will activate a particular gene, and genes regulate the protein synthesis. This is life. At the moment, we have a project which we plan to work on in the nearest future. We'll be testing new peptides, synthesized by analogy with our natural endogenous peptide, isolated from various organs of the human body. We will be testing the effect of those peptides on various tissues and evaluate their ability to stimulate regeneration, differentiation, and the proliferation of cells. We're looking forward to getting good results because then we will be able to work on patients for those peptides and introduce them into medicine. Peptide bioregulators help the organism to restore its functions. The long-term experience of peptides application in medicine has demonstrated the highest efficiency of these preparations in comparison to other pharmaceuticals. When it comes to extending the active period of human life, Havenson's inventions are ahead of the curve. The specialists of the St. Petersburg Institute of Bioregulation and Gerontology have created more than 40 geroproductive preparations protected by 180 patents in Russia, the USA, Japan, and other countries. We have more than 20 Eurasian patents, including in Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Moldavia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Turkmenistan, and also European patents in the EU countries. We also have patents in the USA, Canada, Australia, Japan, and South Korea. Usually, a patent lasts for 20 years, and consequently, those 20 years determine our priority for some areas. Much has been done during the four years of Havenson's term as president of the International Association of Gerontology and Geriatrics European region. For example, the encyclopedia Gerontology in Europe was launched. It was a monumental international project, released on the initiative of Vladimir Havenson. He also contributed to the development of gerontology in Europe. In what way? He helped to bridge the gap between researchers and policymakers. We often say scientists get together to discuss their narrow issues of specialty. However, such meetings must be multidisciplinary and involve the interchange of experience and data with further implementation into practice. And it is absolutely crucial to get those ideas and data across to the decision makers, because the world population is getting old. The fast demographic transition which started at the beginning of the 20th century is accelerating in its pace. First of all, it regards the emerging markets, which includes Russia. And what is more important is the bridge which Professor Havenson has successfully sustained for many years. The bridge between policy decision makers and science. Havenson peptides inhibit aging and increase the average lifespan, which is a fact proven by scientific studies. The average cell will divide 50 times, but the administering of bioregulators increases the number of cell divisions up to 60 to 65, thus significantly enhancing this vital resource of the body. And those who caught on to this little secret prefer to pay Professor Havenson a personal visit. There were guests and patients of all kinds, from Arabian sheiks to celebrities.
Here you can see some of the guests and patients of our institute. Here is the Prime Minister of Thailand, Thaksin Shinovatra. He visited us with a proposal to relocate our Institute of Technology to Bangkok, where he had built facilities for us. The building resembles a kind of spaceship. Shinavatra supported the anti-aging research and was extremely interested in it. Here I am granted the Honored Scientist Award, signed by the President of Russia. The award was presented by the Governor of St. Petersburg. This is from our visit to the UAE. This is their Minister of Energy, Sheikh Saeed. We discussed the possibility of moving to Abu Dhabi, which was the purpose of my visit. It was July, 100 degrees in the shade. As you can see, it's impossible to live there. But still, they made the proposal. I'd like to draw your attention to this photo. This is the president of the International Association of Gerontology and Geriatrics, Professor Hyungbong Cha from South Korea. I invited them to visit St. Petersburg. In this photo, we're at the Legislative Assembly, the Parliament of St. Petersburg. This is also a photo of an outstanding person, Rem Ivanovich Vyakharov, the chairman of Gazprom. He also visited us and was our patient for a while. Here, you can see the president of Bosphorus Gaz Corporation, a Turkish subsidiary of Gazprom. This is George Ivanovich Alferov, Nobel Prize laureate, vice president of the Russian Academy of Sciences. He also supported our research. Then, here you can see the president of Kazakhstan, who also visited our institute. He was right here in this room. He as well supports our research. He is a very profound person. This is a Nobel Nobel Prize winner from Belgium, and here are Doherty and Zinkernagel, also Nobel Prize laureates. This is their book which they signed for me, Vladimir Havenson, with best wishes. I'd like to draw your attention to these photos of our celebrities. This is Valery Leontiev, who visited us and used our medications. Here is Mikhail Zadornov. He is very concerned about his health, and he is absolutely right. We also helped Igor Korneliuk, who had some troubles with bronchi. And this is the astronaut Grechko, whom we helped as well. Does Russia have anything to offer to the world regarding anti-aging when all the Nobel Prizes in this field have been taken by the Americans? Or the fact that traditional Asian medicine and its centuries-long experience, perhaps as the remedy against aging? Yes, probably. But in the end, they all come to Havenson. When I came here for the first time, I was not in very good condition. But when I returned to China after that, my impression was really nice. And my colleagues also noticed the effect from the treatment. They said the result was really good. I think they are the greatest researchers, not only in Russia, but the world over. I am very happy with my treatment, and I think they are wonderful people. I can feel improvements after my course of treatment, and those patients whom I invited here also showed good results. This is why I am definitely interested in promoting these bioregulators on the Chinese market. We've discussed our prospective collaboration several times, and we've already launched some projects. The first project involves treating Chinese patients with retinal disorders here in Russia. Our medications are registered on the territory of Russia and are legally allowed for application in Russia. So the treatment can be performed only in Russia, and we treat the patients at our medical center, the Tree of Life under the St. Petersburg Institute of Bioregulation and Gerontology. This is the first project. The second one is connected with the distribution of our biologically active supplements and cosmetics in China, with further introduction of goods to Chinese markets. And the third project is dedicated to creation of a scientific center in China, where Russian and Chinese scientists can study the mechanisms of the action of peptides and their effectiveness. Vladimir Havenson has been offered the chance to leave Russia and work for the benefit of other countries on numerous occasions. He's been promised a new clinic and a million-dollar salary. But 
he has refused each time as a matter of policy. I am devoted to Russia for several reasons. I studied here and succeeded in various fields, and I know how to do it in Russia. Secondly, Russia is extremely rich in talented people. The genetics of the Russian nation is fantastic due to its multinationalities. I mean, the number of genetic combinations is huge. This is why there are so many talented people and beautiful women. And this is why Russia, with its population of 148 million, has such enormous intellectual potential. Of course, people immigrate, but new generations are born. And that's the reason why Russia is a source of gifted people. And this is why the employees of my institute are only talented people. It is beneficial for me to be in Russia, you see, because of the talents. I've created a new molecular modeling laboratory. Working there are biophysicists, mostly women, and all of them are brilliant, talented scientists, which are very hard to come by in Europe. I've always been surprised with the enormous amount of people who come to Havenson for help. There have been many famous people from different countries. There were members of the Nazarbayev family, people from the Emirates. They offered him new clinics and medical centers in other countries, and I've heard it with my own ears. He helps them, of course, but he remains a patriot. His commitment to science speaks volumes about Vladimir Havenson. He is truly devoted to his work, and when he sees a scientific goal, nothing can stop him, and I mean that in a good way. And of course, the role of peptides, which he has been studying for the past couple of decades, is an issue of great interest for everybody. We've been working together for many years. He is a very interesting person. I think the research he has done so far, and the studies he is working on at the moment, will be highly praised. And I think that in terms of gerontology, he is the most outstanding specialist in Russia, and not only in Russia. Take Havenson peptides, and you will live to be a hundred years old. What could be easier? But the professor says it's not enough. What you need as well is the right attitude and, strange as it may seem, a certain cultural level. The level of culture. Why do you think St. Petersburg has the highest rate of elderly citizens at 25%? Because this is the cultural capital of Russia. And the cultural level here is the highest in Russia. By cultural level, I mean proper nutrition, physical activity, use of technologies, well-timed medical examinations. This is a way of life, you see. Doctors or hospitals won't chase their patients. People take care of themselves, are their own doctors. I don't know if that's bad or how it should be. We have some patients who are already ill, but they say, I would like to do this and this, and these are the patients to work with. We can't run outside and shout, come here everyone, we'll make you young and happy. No, everything comes from the person, because a person is the center of his world. If he realizes that, good for him then. This is a person to work with. Of course, everyone should take care of their health on their own initiative. And we doctors are here to guide the patients, to tell them how to maintain a healthy lifestyle or eat healthy. Let's imagine a person eating wrong food all day long. Cakes, lots of pastries. What will be the result? These are easily digested carbohydrates, some fats. Does it depend on the financial status of this person? Of course not. I can assure you this relies upon his intellectual level. Fries, gourmet food and various pastries are more expensive than vegetables and fruits. This is why we're talking about the intellectual aspect. It is the path to a long and happy life. Do not ruin your health. No one will help you unless you take care of your health by yourself. If you are addicted to alcohol or drugs, no money will help you to stay young, beautiful and healthy. It is the state's responsibility to keep the nation healthy, and talented Russian scientists and their inventions can be of great help. By now, the Institute of Vladimir Havenson has created a third generation of medications 
and more than 10 compounds of peptide bioregulators. A further line of research is dedicated to slowing down the aging processes and increasing the lifespan of the human body. Recently, we've sent seven preparations for registration. They are absolutely new and have no equivalents abroad. It's not even import substitution. These preparations are unique, obtained for the first time. We have developed new lines of research, in particular bioinformatics and molecular modeling. For that purpose, we hired specialists in biophysics, chemistry and biotechnology, because medical and biological knowledge solely was not enough. At the moment, molecular research lies at the heart of medicine. This is called molecular medicine. By the way, this area is greatly supported by the Chief Academic Secretary of the Russian Academy of Sciences, Mikhail Paltsev. He is the editor-in-chief of the journal that is dedicated to molecular medicine. So this is a new and very progressive direction, which may lead to the development of a new generation of highly effective medications with no side effects. This is our goal. At the moment in America, peptide preparations are considered to be the most prospective material for the development of safe pharmaceuticals. Why peptides? Because they are extremely active. Peptides are endogenous, which means they're associated with the human body. And they work really quickly. And after their work is done, they decompose into amino acid, which means they are safe for the body. And after that, the amino acids obtained, if they are good, are formed into proteins. Vladimir Havinson is an enthusiastic person and, like many of us, he has a hobby. But it is a rather unusual one. He collects knowledge and he has been devoted to this all his life. You see, I've always been into sports. I used to be a professional sportsman in my youth. I like swimming, bicycling and other sports activities. As for my hobby, it's my work actually. And my work is searching for the truth, you see? Innovative research, seeking the answers to nature's puzzles, trying to solve the code of life. That is what I do. This is the most fascinating thing in the world. Everything else is less interesting. Those who seek for truth, be it in medicine or in any other field, just have to be thoroughly educated. There is a saying, if you survive the scientific battle, then you have read the right books in your childhood. And Havenson certainly read such books. Goethe's Faust is my favorite. Goethe wrote it in his late 80s. He was a genius, an absolute genius. It's a book of evolution. You may call it the evolution of mind, the brain, of life, whatever. Then I like Jack London. His Martin Eden is a splendid book or Sinclair Lewis's Aerosmith, also a brilliant literary work, Theodore Dreiser's The Financier, or, for example, our Russian writer Shishkov and his novel Ugrum Reka. It is marvelous. His Prokhor Gromov can be compared to Frank Cooperwood. Literature is not the only passion of Professor Havenson. He also adores poetry and can recite the immortal verses learnt by heart, seeking for hidden harmony. That merit and good fortune are connected is something that these idiots will never see. The Philosopher's Stone could be in their possession, but there'd be no philosopher to use it. Or, for example, about a man and woman. It requires two noble hearts for love to bless humanity. But to be a thing apart, they must make a precious three. What else can I say? Thy glass will show thee how thy beauties wear, thy dial how thy precious minutes waste, the vacant leaves thy mind's imprint will bear, and of this book this learning mayst thou taste, the wrinkles which thy glass will truly show, of mouthed graves will give thee memory. Thou by thy dial's shady stealth mayest know time's thievish progress to eternity. Look what thy memory cannot contain. Commit to these waste blanks, and thou shalt find those children nursed, delivered from thy brain, to take a new acquaintance of thy mind. 
these offices so oft as thou wilt look, shall profit thee, and much enrich thy book. A Sonnet by Shakespeare Vladimir Havenson could be resting on the laurels of the former gerontologist of Russia, or he could leave Russia and work for the benefit of foreign elite. But he has other plans for life. Scientific, personal, creative. He has a motto. The power of unity lies in the freedom of choice. It is labor in the name of creation, in the name of conception, and for your country.